Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing My Name is On a Judge by Suzette D. Harrison. Now about a year ago I reviewed The Girl at the Back of the Bus and also The Dust Bowl Orphans by Suzette D. Harrison. The Girl at the Back of the Bus in 2021 was my pretty much my favorite book of the entire year. That book was much reminding us of Rosa Parks and her refusal to sit in the back of the bus. And in the story, The Girl at the Back of the Bus, it was that character's experiences. In this book, My Name is On a Judge, we have another book that is very heavy regarding history. The history in this book takes place in 1796 New Hampshire when president of the, the President of the United States at that time, George Washington, and his wife, Martha Washington, and our character, Ona Judge, became Martha Washington's maid, or a maid in that household. She became a maid at a very young age, at the age of 10. Now, up until the age of 10, she was happy as happy could be in the time frame she lived in. She had a mother, she had sisters, she had friends. But she was ripped away from all of that and ensconced in this household. And now she realizes fully the role of being a slave, chattel, property. That's what she was. Well, my name is on a judge is given this title because the book is in dual timeline fashion. The second part of the the story is in, I'm going to, I hope I say this properly, Shinkleteague, Virginia, present day. And we have Tessa Scott who discovers a diary on a property. And when she discovers this diary, at first she doesn't know what to do because she feels like she's going to violate the privacy of the person that wrote that diary. But as she starts to read that diary, she starts to read owner judge's experiences. Okay, so I talked a little bit about Ona Judge and how she became a slave, but let's talk a little bit about Tessa Scott. Now, she has a very successful career. She's an entrepreneur and she's very busy, but her ex-boyfriend, I think his name is BC, he asked her to look over his grandmother's property because it's involved in a legal dispute. And as she had a good relationship with BC when they were teenagers, and because of respect for his grandmother, she agrees to look over the property. And so doing is how she discovers that journal. More than that about Tessa is she's involved in a relationship. And in this relationship, it's not a happy one. And I say that because one of the things is she's at a turning point in this relationship. He's controlling, he's demanding, borderline abusive, if not emotionally, and then she also has some health issues that she has to address. So she barely has time to do the survey for BC's grandmother, but she does it anyway. But she ends up opening the pages of this journal and she becomes spellbound, okay? Now, what happens in this journal is Ona Judge starts to describe her experiences and the journal is broken up into age ranges, like say 10 years of age or 12 years of age or 15 to 18. It's, it's broken up like that. Now, how can I put this be, without being like too dramatic? Any history about slavery is difficult to read. And my most impressive experience with slavery research or knowledge is when I was 13 years old, I was at my grandmother's house and she had just bought Alex Haley's book, Roots. It was about 800 pages. I sat there, I wasn't at my grandmother's, my grandmother was there, but she brought the book with her. I was at my aunt, aunt and uncle, his name was Roger, her name was Joan. I was at my aunt and uncle's house sat at that kitchen table I had that book in my hands and do you know that I did not get up from that table until I read that entire book from cover to cover that's what I did with the book Roots it was a few years later that we saw the television series that was produced which I think was like an eight part 
seven or eight part series. So we got to see some really intense historical facts about slavery, historical facts that just really don't get taught in school. So when you read this book, My Name is On a Judge, there were some things, there were two things really. One in particular, a character, I mean, you know, someone in the background learned to write the first letter of his name. And I believe he had two fingers chopped off just for trying to write his name. We'll just leave it at that. That's the intensity of slavery. No, we won't just leave it at that. The other part that I, I, I was, I was going to mention that I wasn't going to mention, but I'll mention it anyway. You see the mela, the color in my skin. Now, granted, uh, I don't have any African relatives or ancestors. My ancestors are from Syria, from Canada, from the islands. But there are many light-skinned black people. Why? Because slave owners, they did not respect their slaves. And many, 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 many mulatto children were born. So that was something else that came up in this book. And it's very sensitive, so I'm sorry if that is disturbing. So back to Tessa reading this journal and for Ona's experiences. Now, Ona is very, very, very talented. She wanted to be a seamstress like her mother, but that didn't quite work out for her and she became the slave. What made her become the chief maid for Martha Washington actually was the children that she was looking after, and she was a child herself, but the children she was looking after had destroyed a little, like a little bear or a little stuffed animal. And she took that stuffed animal and she expertly sewed it back together. And what I loved about it is she used what was called hidden stitches, something that I learned to do from my mother. And she went to give this toy back, but she got called, she got called like Ona come here or something along that line. And the toy was found in her pocket and she thought she was gonna be whipped for having this toy. And then she gets asked, did you do this? You know, the repair work? And she said, yes. So that's what got her the job as the chief mate was her ex excellent talent. So I, I kind of like that. Now, there was a time when Ona got invited to hear something that made her eventually escape slavery. And that, oh, by the way, the toy was a rabbit. I was looking through Goodreads. The toy was a rabbit that she repaired. And that's how it changed her life. But that's neither here nor there. So, you know, I'm eight, eight, eight minutes in. I'm just going on and on. I'm sorry. I love this book. Can you tell I love this book? Can you tell that I love Suzette D. Harrison? Can you tell that I want you to get this book? I hope so. I mean, what else am I here for if not to encourage you to get these books that I talk about? Now, Ona did escape. And do you know what the price on her head was? It was $10. How did she escape? Well, you'll have to read the book to find out. What happened to her afterwards? Well, you'll have to read the book to find out. So that is my name is Ona Judge. I hope you read this book. And let me tell you, put Suzette D. Harrison on your radar. I already mentioned the girl at the back of the bus and the Dust Bowl orphans. But if you go to Goodreads, for example, or Fantastic Fiction, or Amazon for that matter, she wrote quite a few other books. So put her on your radar. You won't be disappointed. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.